thought it might be interesting to look at different ancestries or races in D&D 5e and Pathfinder 2, just to see how they compare. Let's get started with dwarves, because alphabetically, they're first. Ability score. 5e. If you're a dwarf, you get a constitution bonus of plus 2. In Pathfinder 2, you get a constitution bonus of plus 2, as well as a wisdom plus 2, a charisma minus 2, and then a plus 2 of your choice. This is different because in 5e, ability scores are determined by dice rolls, or by assigning a standard array of numbers, whatever variant you happen to be using. Either way, the assumption is that you have numbers that are not the baseline of 10 already entered on your character sheet. So a boost is granted by your choice of race, and it's just usually the one boost, or maybe two plus one boosts, because you've already got other numbers in your attributes. Now in Pathfinder 2, ability scores all start at 10, and then they accumulate boosts and penalties according to the life choices you make for your character as you build your character. For this reason, Pathfinder 2 ability score benefits look really generous compared to 5e, but it's really not. It's just that you've only got 10 in everything as it is, so you need to get boosts to more than one thing. Speed. 25 feet in 5e, 20 feet in Pathfinder 2. So both systems account for the presumed length of your stride as a dwarf. Dark Vision. 5e and Pathfinder 2 both grant dwarves Dark Vision. In 5e, Dark Vision persists 60 feet. In Pathfinder 2, Dark Vision persists for as long as your vision lasts, um, but vision ranges are expressed differently uh, in Pathfinder 2 than in 5e. So in Pathfinder 2, when there's a light source boosting the efficacy of your vision within a specific range, then that effect persists within that range. Once the light goes, g gives way to, to darkness, like the light starts to fall off into darkness, then you're, you're, you're using your dark vision again. The wording is a little awkward in 5e, but the rules essentially say that a dim light placed within 60 feet of you makes your vision normal until the end of the dim light's effect. Once the effect of the dim light has given way to darkness, you're falling back on dark vision. So basically the same thing, just worded differently in each system. Poison resistance. This is kind of uh, a thing that dwarves have. So in 5e, advantage against poison, resistance against poison damage. In Pathfinder 2, you get nothing by default unless you choose Strong-Blooded Dwarf as your heritage. Uh, this gives you poison resistance equal to half your level, or a minimum of one. Each successful saving throw against poison reduces its stage of progression by two for a regular poison or by one for a virulent poison. This is kind of the textbook example of, of what is appealing of 5e, I think. What's the goal? It's to demonstrate that dwarves are resilient against poison. 5e does it with one dice roll. You get advantage. That's it. That, that, that expresses that goal. Pathfinder 2 builds it into your character with a numeric bonus, and then it goes that extra mile and provides separate rules for specific saving throws. Neither of these two ways is wrong. It's just a question of whether you think you'll ever want to walk an extra mile when confronted with a specific situation. Some people do, they like that kind of granularity. Other people are happy to just roll two die and take the higher of the two. Weapon proficiencies. In 5e, you gain proficiency with the battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. This means that when you use those weapons, you are able to add your proficiency bonus to your attack. And of course, your proficiency bonus starts at plus two at level one, goes up to level three at level five, and then four, and then five, and then six. Pathfinder 2, no proficiencies by default, unless you spend your ancestry feat on Dwarven Weapon Familiarity. For all the decoupling of abilities and race, it's kind of surprising that 5e of these two systems is the one to assume that every dwarf is proficient with a specific list of weapons. Um, I think Pathfinder 2 makes more sense, but wait for me to contradict myself when it comes to stone cunning. Stone cunning. In 5e, when you make an intelligence history check related to the origin, the, the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient in that skill and add double your proficiency 
to the check. In Pathfinder 2, no, there's no proficiency for this by default, unless you spend your ancestry feat on stone cunning. Now you only get one ancestry feat at first level, so you are choosing now between dwarven weapon familiarity or stone cunning. The dungeon master rolls in secret for you to notice unusual stonework, and you get a bonus to notice unusual stonework, including when traps are embedded within that stone. For me, stone cunning is a requisite skill for a dwarf. I can definitely envision the role-playing moment where you turn to your dwarf companion for information about some ancient stone structure and the dwarf just shrugs and says, I don't know, I grew up in Magnamar. Objectively though, treating major traits as opt-in heritages or feats offers a high degree of customization. As a player, you get to play the dwarf that interests you, capitalizing on the aspects of the dwarf archetype that you actually care about. In other words, maybe you want your dwarf to have grown up in the city. They don't know about stonework. Well, in Pathfinder 2, that's not necessarily built into your character. You could have them being very, very familiar with weapons and something else other than uh, stone cunning. Now in 5e, obviously, they give you stone cunning. You could customize your character to say, I am going to forego the benefit of stone cunning because I want my dwarf to have grown up in the city. Two different ways at arriving at functionally the same result, but I guess the difference there would be when you want your dwarf to have grown up in the city and to have stone cunning, now you have to make a choice in Pathfinder 2, whereas in 5e, you're just gifted it for free. Heritages, or a sub-race in 5e. 5e has two sub-races. There's the Hill Dwarf, which grants you a plus one to wisdom and a plus one per level to your maximum HP. Or there's a Mountain Dwarf, plus two to strength and armor proficiency. Pathfinder 2 has four heritage to heritages to choose from. Death Warden, you can treat success against necromancy as a critical success every time. Forge, fire you gain fire resistance equal to half your level, minimum of one. Treat heat effects as one level lower than they are listed. Rock, plus two to fortitude or reflex saves against shove and trip attempts, and spells that attempt to knock you prone. If anything forces you to move ten feet, you only move five instead or strong-blooded poison resistance. There's that poison resistance. This demonstrates the modularity of Pathfinder 2 compared to previous iterations of the D&D model. It's interesting to note that 5e's subrace options affect attribute scores, while Pathfinder 2 doesn't affect your attributes at all. It just grants extra features, health points. 5e, hit points aren't assigned by your race, um, but you if you do take that hill dwarf uh, subrace, that grants you plus one to your max HP per level, so that would have an effect on your HP nevertheless. In Pathfinder 2, you get 10 HP from being a for, for being a dwarf. Uh, there's that's going to be boosted further by your choice of class because classes also carry, well, classes carry hit point bonuses just like they do in in 5e. The difference that there is an important difference between 5e and Pathfinder 2 and health health point hit points. Uh, in, in 5e, for instance, you regain all of your HP after a long rest. In Pathfinder 2, you only gain your level times your constitution modifier in HP after a long rest. So there's clearly some common threads between 5e and Pathfinder 2. In lore, their histories are pretty similar. Neither are terribly different than the classic Tolkien-derived fantasy dwarf archetype. They live mostly underground. They're... They're of the forge. They build thing, or they um, they hammer things out. Uh, they're big and strong and resi resilient, and not necessarily terribly prone to to magic. In either system, there are two prominent defaults. You can build a strong and sturdy dwarf, or a wise dwarf with deep knowledge of world history and lore. From there, you can focus your dwarf on whatever specialty you prefer, whether it's big hefty weapons, or metallurgy and smithy work, or physical strength, and affinity to stone. In 5e, you focus your character through ability increases and in your choice of weapons and skills. In Pathfinder 2, you focus your character through feats and skills. Next, I'm going to compare elves 
who have very different lore between the default settings. So it'll be interesting to see whether any of that comes through in stat block options. Until then, thanks for watching.